Hello, today we have a Slay the Darkness list. Uh, we're continuing to wrap up 3rd edition by trying some interesting different lists. I have never played Slaves, but looking to play this host of ever chosen list. Gonna have my grand strategy, we follow the path to glory. Gonna have our general, is gonna be this Sork Lord on foot here. He's gonna have the Arch Sorcerer and Merciless Blizzard. This other little guy here is gonna be standing in as another Sork Lord. He's going to have the Undivided Mark and the Chaos Familiar and Demonic Speed. Our General is going to be Mark Slanesh. The Chaos Lord on Kakadrak is going to be Mark Korn. The Slanesh Marked General is going to pair with our Slanesh Marked Chosen, trying to give them the uh, 3d6 charge prayer from the Chaos War Shrine we've got that's got the Heal Prayer. Trying to make them a little bit faster. Run and charge. 3d6 charge. Two units of five cast knights. Both marked corn. The Kakadrak Lord is going to have mark a corn as well. Our 20 block of chaos warriors here. Mark a Nurgle. And they will have the erotic icon. Minus one rend. The chosen will also have the mark of Slanesh. And we've got an allied in Cockadrack because I like them. And they're fun. And that's what we're coming in at 1980. See how this works out. All right, today we have a Sylvaneth Hartwood list. I just got Bill Thanos, got him built up. So let's see what he does with 18 turnoff hunters. We got six size, three swords, and nine bows to benefit from all of attack the most. Because that four to hit is not fun. But um, Bill Thanos is Bill Thanos, nothing special extra there. But um, we got an arc revenant back here. He's got the um, command trait Warsinger for plus three movement characteristic if a unit starts holding within 12 of him. Hopefully you'll match up with the um, some of that Bill Thanos stuff. And his artifact is going to be the Arcane Tome. So I have somebody to cast some Wildwoods in places and Mystic Shield, as well as the Spite Swarm Hive when I get a chance. Um, all this coming in, I think it's 1930 points, so I'll be having a triumph of Inspired here. Going off against Host of the Ever Chosen Slaves. Here we go. Alright, here we are. Got the Slaves deployed. Need our Knights on either flank. Kakadrak on this side, Chosen in the back here a little bit. Two Sork Lords right there within 30 of uh, Arch Revenant. Cockatrace within 6 inches of order there to try and stop stuff from hitting things. Or hitting on sixes only. What you got going on over here? I got um, we got six sides. We got the three swords in front screening the arc rev and nine of those over here getting the buff. With Belthanos here ready to see if that terrain piece can become mystical to make it easier for this to pop up. Yeah. Uh, swarm. Over there. Okay. Um. Yeah, we were one drop, so I finished first, and I'm gonna give the turn to slaves. Okay, going to turn one, slaves. All right, here we are at the end of Slave of the Darkness turn one. Didn't have much to do. We got uh, given turn one. So we took as our battle tactic, Intimidate the Invaders, because both of our wizards were within range of dispel. A little bit of deployment error on my part. <clears throat> we failed a Mystic Shield attempt on the Warriors, and we got uh, the War Scroll spell on the Sork Lord for plus one to hit and wound on them. So they're beefy, I guess. Uh, and just kind of ran everything else up. Just expecting to get shot at. Ran these guys over here. Trying to get into that overgrown terrain. And over here as well. Just moving up. Slogging forward. Getting ready to get shot at. So that's going to be one and more. No, excuse me. One and two. And the uh, battle tactic. Two points from that. And two for the battle tactic. Four to zero. So we're going to turn one. All right, and the Sylvaneth shooting phase. We got um, Belthanos moved up here. But he moved up there. The Scythe Hunters teleported off to this side. We took Lead into the Maelstrom as our battle tactic. Um, we had second turn, so our Arc Rev had an extra cast. I was gonna go for a Wildwood and the Spice from Hive. Rolled a five with a one in it for the um, Wildwood. Uh, Belthanos failed to turn this into Arcane Terrain. And then I rolled a one on the primal. So he blew up, didn't die, thankfully. 
but um, no words were made. So dangs on these Colonel Hunters over here, so they've got plus one to hit. They should have plus one to wound from the Archive's uh, command ability, or not command ability, but um, plus one to wound aura, depending on how I can set up that charge. And uh, hopefully we'll get two charges in here, with Beltanos being one of them. Yep, going for a letter yeah, to the Maelstrom, you said? Yeah, letter to the Maelstrom. Um, the Nine Hunters shot the Chosen and did 14 damage after the wards from the War Shrine. So pretty happy with that. A lot of points. Not, I haven't been super impressed with bow hunters in the past, but I mean, if there's enough of them, there are two damage each. So um, we'll see how it goes. Going into charge phase. So that's turn one. All right, end of Sir Sylvaneth turn one. Um, we got uh, Belthanos charged in. Did all but one damage to the knights, which is great. Um, after getting all out attack from the Arkrev, he was also within range for his um, plus one to wound ability. But we failed both the other charges here, including the reroll on this one that was 8 inches instead of 9. Um, as well as these guys who were technically within range, so I just felt like rolling it. But um, So no luck there, no battle tactic. So he was able to just charge in and strike and fade, meaning he's not going to get hit back. He's not going to get charged by the Chosen next turn. Um, so yeah, lots of damage there. Uh, I guess we got Battle Shock on the Knights, but other than that, I'm going to score 1 for 1, 1 for 2. I don't hold more. So that'll be up to two points to four. And of turn one, enter roll off. Okay. Right. Double turn for Sylvaneth. I'll think about it. Let's think about it. it. All right. End of charge phase for Sylvaneth, turn two. Um, battle tactic was intimidate the invaders just to make sure we get one this time and not be any further down in the points. Um, went for the Spice Swarm Hive again, and this cast it primarily again, so... Fortunately, was, you had heroic yeah, recovery. Yeah, fuel fields the Arc Rev before that, between heroic recovery and the overgrown terrain. But he's right back up to four now, so we'll see how that goes next turn. Um, ran these guys up, everything with running charge is great. So ran these guys up and charged them uh, with a five, which is not great, but got them where they needed to go. Um, Arc Rev moves up to try and move his bubble some more. Kurnoth Hunters rolled not so great wound rolls and um, only killed two Chosen, one of which only had one wound left anyway. We did rally the Chosen and got yes. one back on our five up rally, and you did uh, do an interesting move with the terrain piece. Yeah, uh, Belthanos rolled his three up, so this is Dangs now, so I can give a plus one to hit if I ever need to not target something that's my target unit right now. Yeah. And. Um, what else? Yeah, it's also overgrown. So if they need to teleport somewhere, they've got this block here now. Or if I need to come back for my objectives, probably won't affect a whole lot. But, um, well, Thanos made a 9-inch charge, and these guys rolled boxcars. So they're way in there. Hopefully gonna do as much as we can to negate the Sorcerer Lord support. Um, not sure if Belthanos going into the Warriors right now is a good call. Especially with however the Cockatrice does. But, um, he'll be there, he'll make, hopefully make this terrain piece overgrown the next turn, and so, and potentially deadly or something, just to mess with the army over there, depending on how much damage the swords do. I don't think I've got the swords in combat before. This is one of my first times playing them in this book, so, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes going into Sylvaneth combat phase. Alright, end of Sylvaneth, turn two. Um, Belthanos killed four warriors and an extra one fled to Battle Shock, which was fine. I mean, they're Nurgle warriors with the banner. Um, yeah, you, you stomped them, and then yeah, the Cockatrice did his petrifying gaze. But uh, the hunters with the sword were yes. in range. So that kind of saved her bacon here. Yeah, sword hunters, um, I had to put the leader went into this sorcerer lord and the other two into him. Um, got two sixes into the general with the uh, two guys going into him and none into the other one. And the Chosen killed them before they could try and trample on their foot. So both Sorcerer Lords survived, which is not great for me. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. I thought that Belthanos was the only one within range, but we uh, we got the Petrifying Gaze off on them. They were just within range, so. Yeah, and um, these guys over here finished off the One Knight and the Cacodrack. Yeah, they're, they're sleeping. Um, they're, they're right here, yeah. but they're sleepy, sleepy boys right now. Stairs are hard. Yes. Um, but yeah, so we got the warrior, Nurgle Warriors tied up, but the Slanesh Chosen are completely loose, which is not really where we want them, especially with my Archer and everybody out in the open. 
kind of hoping that the Sword Hunters would survive. I was really only expecting them to go into the Warriors. But um, with them going into the Sorcerer Lords, I had a chance at killing the General, which I think was worth it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I don't keep blowing myself up. But we're going into Slaves of Darkness, turn two. And you score four points for that turn. So that brings one, you to one, six. Two. I have that, but no more. And, and Domicizing Intimidate. Right. So six, six to four, going bottom of turn two for Slaves. Okay, here we are with the bottom of turn two for Slaves. We chose as our battle tactic in Thrall to Chaos. Uh, we chose this objective, no enemy units within 12 inches of it, and we got a blizzard off on Balthanos. We did 13 mm -hmm. wounds, and then the five of pours didn't come through for him. I did roll four of them, or five of them, but... Yeah, just wasn't enough. That's exactly as much as I needed for him to die to the wounds, so... We got the prayer. Fine, soured him. You fine, so soured him. Yeah. I could, but... Yep, so we, we got that so far. Uh, we got the Slanesh prayer off on the shrine onto the Slanesh chosen, so they get three to six charge. We moved them up. Um, yeah, redeployed the Arc Revenant because he's got one wound left. Yep. He's my only caster, and he's my general. And if I stop getting command points and have no heroes, that's going to be really hard for me to come back with. I already am down from my five to three units. Right. So objectives are going to be tough, which I kind of need coming into this list, but... um. The worst thing that could happen is I have no more room to teleport than what he can stand within three inches of right now. I'm losing. Plan, the reason I left Belthanos over here, now that it doesn't matter anymore especially, but um, if it got back to my hero face, I could have turned this into Overgrown and potentially into Deadly to have that sort of as a um, big needy just try and avoid this piece for him. And if I could have survived the next turn, I could have retreated with his uh, retreat and charge command ability over there and started making things back there overgrown. Um, give me some other places to teleport to, give me some backward objective graphic potential, maybe keep my low unit counts able to do some stuff. But um, that's not happening, so we'll see how the list does without the Thanos now. Yeah, uh, Cargo Trace moved up. We did tag the objective with a run roll from these knights, so we do own that one over there. And uh, here we go, charges for slaves. All right, here we are, bottom of turn two for Slaves to Darkness. Uh, we accomplished our battle tactic. There are no enemy units within 12 of that objective. And we charged over here. We went for a 3d6 charge because we got it with the Slanesh Prayer from the War Shrine, and we rolled triple ones. So it's a great thing that I saved my one command point. I was thinking about running and charging them because this is the Slanesh Hero for the run and charge. But that would have required my one command point. So we didn't do that. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it in the hero phase, but we did rally one of these guys back. We took one mortal wound because of the pile-in with the Scythe Hunters to get them outside of being three units on this objective. He's outside of it. Because we didn't want to blow that one up. But we did blow this one up, or tried to, and we didn't roll the four up. The Cogatrice got his petrifying gaze off on the bow hunters, which probably kept things alive a lot yeah. more. Sixes to hit's pretty good. So when you can roll the four up, uh, yeah, it happens. So we we still have that objective over there. So we got one, two, and more, and our battle tactic. Yeah, chosen did chosen things to the size hunters over here. They did them really well uh, after reloading the charge into a sixteen. Yeah, with, with Slanesh gives them plus one just base, and then the uh, drums also give them plus one. So that's really nice with Slanesh. It kind of makes up for the five inch move that makes them hard to use a lot of times. Um, and the three wounds on the Cockatrice over here are from the end of turn Trample on the Foot on the Cardoth Hunters. Um, which is nice when there's a unit of nine. I guess that's a plus side of them. But uh, no damage done in regular melee after only hitting on sixes. Uh, lost the guy to Battle Shock and rolled a six. But um, yeah, score nine to six. Going into roll off for turn three. That's a six. Six for Sylvaneth. Uh, I'm going to have to take it to keep the game going. But Makes there's sense. There's not a whole lot left for me to do. So we'll see. Sylvaneth turn three. All right. Um, end of charge phase for Sylvaneth turn three. I did take the double turn. Just to try and get some points out of it. Um, got the spike from Hive off. We got each got a prime, one primal magic dice at the start of the turn. And I ended up with two sixes this time as opposed to two ones. So that's nice. 
uh, battle tactic was magical dominance. Spice from Hive went off, and I didn't have another cast, so we did get that. Um, they gave plus three to move and charge to them. We rolled a six, and we're just able to get into them after shooting at them and doing no damage. Rolled a bunch of ones to lose. Um, we're going into combat now. See how many they can take out with melee because they're not too bad at it. Um, and hopefully keep the objective and score some points. Uh, yeah, going into combat phase. End of Sylvaneth turn three. Um, mid combat over here. Um, lost one Karnoth Hunter to Lances and Hooves of the Knights, and after Trample on their foot, we were able to kill one Knight. Um, so we will take this objective. We held this one last, and the Warriors are just barely outside of range of it, so I will hold two. Um, not more, but I got the battle tactic because this is here. So scoring four for the turn, put me up to ten to nine, going into Slaves to Darkness, turn three. Alright, here we are. Slaves of Darkness, bottom of turn three, end of movement phase slash shooting phase because we have so much of it. Our battle tactic is surround and destroy. We moved, we retreated our knights out over here to this forward edge. Cockatrice is fast, so we're using the movement. Shrine went over here. What we did in the hero phase, we cast the war scroll spell with him, plus one hit wound, chosen. We also got the uh, Slanesh prayer off from the Shrine onto the Chosen, so they have 3d6 charge. They ran a long ways. Uh, they're also holy within 12, the Slanesh Hero, which is the general, who can give them run and charge. We're closing in on the Isle General over here. Yeah. We ran our uh, warriors back to kind of consolidate here. We set this other stand-in Sork Lord outside of 30, running backwards. To set up for a dominance, perhaps, for this next turn, if we get the double. Yeah, um, the Sorcerer Lord over there, so other casts had happened. Oh yeah. He went for a Mystic Shield, and over here, uh, I had already used up his attempted Dispel with the Primal on the Demonic Power. So Chaotic Conduit was free, cast it, um, put it on himself, because he's undivided. Or actually, it was cast from over here. And, um... Rolled 10, re-rolled, the. it was a 4 and a 6, re-rolled the 4 into a 5, getting Dark Apotheosis, and got an extra cast, which we didn't use because not much to use it on at 30 inch range. But um, that is going to make the grand strategy for the game of rolling that roll. So that's 3 points for that guy. Yep, and he took a 5 up, I um, an extra cast, excuse me, off of the uh, chart for that. Yeah. So going into the charge phase, here we go. All right, here we are, bottom of turn three, end of Slave's turn three, obviously. Uh, we completed our battle tactic for Surround and Destroy, Cockatrice, and we have the uh, Shrine over here, and the Knights went over there. And we made a run, we ran with the Slanesh mark, we did 3d6 charge uh, with the Chosen, and they went zooming across the board from where they were at the beginning of the turn, like over here to the other side of the board. And they killed the general. So that's good. Scored one, two more. 14 to 9, we said. 10? 10. 14 to 10. Yep. Roll off for the fourth turn. What? All right, you got a three. All right, three on slaves. Should probably just take it and yep. see what we can do from here. All right. Okay, here we are. Uh, we just talked out the game. The slaves won the roll off into four, so that got it. We took our battle tactic, a roll on the eye of the gods, and we did with him successfully. And then we, we have a magical dominance for the fifth turn. Uh, we'd score one, two more for each turn. And battle to or our grand strategy. Yes, which, and then we yeah. said you would get. Yeah, I would basically just hold this one. The warriors can easily walk over here and screen off this objective. From getting it, I'm not really fast enough to get to over there, and if I was, the knights could charge me beforehand, which so would probably kill me because the Chaos Knights on the charge. And the biggest part is Cockatrice can just move over here, Warriors can move within three of this, and I no longer have any place to teleport for out of. Um, I can go into something that's within three of an enemy, but it would help me if I can't come out of anywhere, and the more casters to make Wildwoods. So I'm basically just going to be holding this objective both turns because it'll be hard to take it from that is still 10 bodies. Um, checked on what would happen with the rally over the course of two turns and the answer was nothing. But um, 
Yes, we all score two turns from 10 over turns four and five up to 12 to 24. Yep, so slaves win this one. Yeah. Bill Thanos, first time, what'd you think yeah. about him? Bill Thanos is great, very good model. Um, great rules, great buff piece. He's got a five up ward, which is what so many Sylvanas things are missing. Um, except for like the worst on Revenant, but he's not a combat piece. But um, yeah, I mean, it was a meme list overall, but nine bow hunters are fun that first turn when they popped off is just, Hard to get them as consistent as you can get something like Scythes with a Spike Swarm Hive cast by the Warsong Revenant. Just running in with an Arc Revenant to get twos and twos with three Revenants. But yeah. um, it's fun because it's easier to hit with all nine bows. And just something fun to move around. If you're going to take nine Hunters in a block, bows are sort of, I guess, an easier option. Um, they're also cheaper than Scythes now after the points. Uh, got messed around with, but um, fun list to play. I love Cranoth Hunters, so that was that was great. Yeah, it's a great model too. I really like it. Mm -hmm. They did a good job with it. What yeah. you thinking about Slaves? This is my first game with Slaves. You coached me through it pretty good there, but the idea that I had had that you kind of helped flesh out a lot uh, was the Slanesh trying to get the charge. Yes. Yeah, uh, trying to get the chosen into the game. Really, because yeah. they're so slow, and when we've seen them on the board before, it's just difficult to get them in. So the idea was just trying to get them a 3d6 charge prayer from the shrine and all. And Yeah, yeah, it absolutely worked like a charm. I mean, most of the time when I've played Chosen, my experience has been they get either shot or casted off the board, or just don't get into combat because they can be avoided, or like, I fought Beast of Chaos with them a lot, and you just use that devolve hero action or whatever to get them toward the edge of the board. Um, so letting them get plus one or two to run, plus two to charge, and 3d6 charge and run and charge is basically at this point you treat them like cavalry, which is exactly what you need. You get the banner, which still gives you plus one attacks on a charge. You're not missing out on all that much from corn. Demonic power gives you plus one to wounds anyway, so the corn banner isn't necessarily necessary in this situation. And it's not, they were never lacking in damage. Everything they touched blew up. Um, Nurgle Warriors are always good. Always have been. Um, and the Corn Knights didn't get much charge in, but they did say they've got a three up save, so they're still tanky even without Mark of Nurgle that I end up playing them in a lot. Um, and the Cockatrice was big MVP this battle, rolling all those four ups. Yeah, he kept um, my general alive. That would have probably been grand strategy gone there. The two sword lords would have probably died to those sword hunters. So, pocket pick there. Yeah. Yeah. Got to roll him, the four up. <laughs> him plus Nurgle Warriors is very, very scary. You, you just want to avoid it or try and shoot him off the board. But I saw Chosen is more of a threat. But, um, yeah, bow hunters are swingy because they hit on fours. But, um,. Yeah, the chosen combo works very, very well. Very well. I'd say this is, if I had to pick one way to play chosen, this would be the way. Nice. Yep, and the uh, snickerdoodle are ready. In case you were wondering what the beeping was. Cookie time. All right, let us know what, else, what other interesting list you guys want us to try out as we close out third edition. That's what we're kind of working with here. Um, just trying out weird, interesting, different lists. Signing out.